back in just one moment. Okay, I think that's live now. Go ahead. Thank you. Today is March 2nd, uh, 2022. This is a public information meeting concerning the planning application for a development agreement to permit tourist accommodations at 536 Sunken Lake Road, Sunken Lake. And I would like to mention at this point, there are no evaluation or decisions have been made at this point. And uh, present is myself, Peter Allen, uh, Councillor for District 9. And we have Mark Fredericks from the planning department and the applicant, Chesley Long, representing Kensal Properties. And before we get into the meeting presentations, I would like to mention concerning questions about this uh, application. This presentation is being recorded and posted to the municipal website. Members of the public will have at least 30 days to view the posted presentation and provide questions and comments to the planner, which will be included as part of the report to the planning advisory committee. And I would like to ask that when uh, anyone uh, emailing or calling with questions or comments that uh, members of the public provide their name and address. And uh, with that said, Mark, when you're ready, you can start your presentation. Great, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen here. And go through a few slides. So thank you, uh, Councillor Allen. OK, everyone seeing that slide? Yes. Yeah. OK, so thanks, guys. So we yeah, we've got a, we've got a, a planning application uh, has been submitted to the municipality. And one of the first steps is to hold this public information meeting. Uh, it's an application for a tourist accommodations, and we'll look at what those maybe look like in a moment. Location at 536 Sunken Lake Road. The applicant is Chesley Long, who's part of the Kenzel Properties family. And um, we'll take a look at that property in just a moment. But the purpose of this meeting, we just want to reinforce that largely it's to inform the public, to explain some of the planning policies that we look at in our process, and to receive some early feedback uh, from neighbors and general public. The proposal here again is it's to establish a kind of vacation rental experience in the woods along Sunken Lake. Uh, pretty exciting opportunity. It's a wooded uh, lakeside property, uh, quite unique um, and, and beautiful. And uh, the planning application that's been submitted is for a development agreement. That development agreement would be able to permit uh, what is otherwise um, you know, beyond what's allowed in the zoning. So Sunken Escapes hopes to offer kind of 25 tent or cabin style units uh, on approximately five acres. Uh, this is just an example of one of the styles of accommodations that, that they may offer on the property. <clears throat> property itself, it's, again, is mostly wooded. Uh, it's about five acres in size um, and it has great water access along Sunken Lake, as you can see. Uh, this property may be familiar to some as it provides access to the scout camp in, in the back here along Long Road. And so some people may have traveled that uh, over the years to, to access uh, the scout camp. And that road, as I understand, uh, has, has provided historic access to the scouting camp and, and will continue to provide um, that access to the scout camp, uh, which would remain on the adjacent property. When we look at the zoning, uh, that scout camp is, is shown here in green as the commercial recreation or P1 zone. And then this is the subject property here shown in, in red. It's the intent, I believe, to form a bit of a loop here. So again, this long road that comes in off of Sunken Lake uh, would continue to provide access to this property, but it would also loop around and connect down to the long road branch. So there'd be a bit of a loop structure with cabins and accommodations kind of scattered throughout the woods here. The zoning in this area is lakeshore residential, so this is an area that is intended to accommodate residential uh, forms of development and, and other kind of accommodations as well. This is a recent photograph of Long Road as it's sort of on your way into the scout camp, uh, and that's sort of shown here on the site plan. Uh, the site plan that's been submitted is kind of a preliminary plan. It, it gives a sense of what they're hoping to do. Um, this is Sunken Lake Road, and the lake is on the left here. So the idea would be that there'd be some, I think, reuse of one of the existing buildings. There's a home here at 536 Sunken Lake Road. My understanding is there'd be some reuse of that structure as a kind of sort of office, uh, potential for a kind of community building uh, at this end, and 
and this short sort of shows that loop structure of how this may work. And again, that road uh, that's existing could have a single sort of cabins off of the side of it with a little parking pad, something similar along here. Some of these may be geodesic domes. Some of these may be tunnel tents, and I'll let Chesley maybe speak to to what arrangement they see. It's my understanding, though, that this interior core, this little pathway here uh, would be walk in sites. These would be sort of really miniature cabins, maybe elevated off the ground in a way, sort of a unique experience. And those walk in sites would have a kind of central parking area uh, right down here in the south end of the property. So you can see that's that's the sort of potential layout and um, it, it's approximately 25 units. And again, those units would vary in size from so, sort of small to medium cabins and tents. And that gives a sense of what it would look like. This community building is kind of where the road turns to uh, go into the scout camp. So this is kind of the proposal and uh, that's sort of what it looks like from the kind of planning perspective from the planning policy. There is a, there is a policy that allows council to consider this kind of proposal. It allows council to consider by development agreement within the shoreland designation. And again, that's where we're located here. Allows council to consider by development agreement proposals for visitor oriented developments, and this is largely vacation or tourist kind of accommodations. And so it certainly suits this policy. Now this policy has a few criteria that um, you know that aim to minimize the impact on neighboring properties and so on. So as part of the planning review process, we will review these criteria against the proposal and you know provide some sort of adjustments or negotiations along the way so that we can satisfy these criteria. So the first one is that the proposal is oriented towards the visitors. It's not just standard housing. Um, so the proposal is oriented towards the traveling public. It could be lodging. In this case, it's kind of lodging. Uh, could be restaurant or event venue or other kind of special attractions. Now, this kind of is a bit of a bit of lodging and special attractions as it has, you know, waterfront access and uh, a great access to nature and so on. So uh, certainly it is it is oriented towards the visitors, though. We also look that the subject property has a lot area, so the size of the lot can appropriately accommodate the number of units or the proposed use. And in this case, um, you know, 25 units on five acres, it, it perhaps is a reasonable balance there. We do need to fit septic fields in, parking areas, uh, roadways, and, and other infrastructure. And so uh, we kind of we work through that kind of process uh, through the planning process, and uh, we need to satisfy that criteria as well. And then the last one uh, helps to address some of the neighboring property owners. And in this case, there is one residential dwelling relatively close. So this criteria C requires that the site facilities, so that is all of the uh, facilities within there, be it cabins or community buildings or whatever, all those facilities should be adequately buffered or separated from any surrounding residential dwellings, with the exception of a residential dwelling that may be occupied by the operator that's on site. And that sort of buffering and that separation helps to mitigate negative impacts associated with potential noise or light or other kind of visual impacts that, that could occur from a kind of uh, camping kind of operation. So those are the sort of specific criteria that we review. Those criteria are uh, are analyzed and considered uh, in, a, in a staff report that goes to the planning advisory committee in the future. And the public feedback that we hope to, hope to gather from this process also helps kind of uh, shape how, how we evaluate these sorts of things. And then, of course, there's also general criteria, and we look at general these. The list of general criteria is a bit longer than this, but they're also included in the pl planning report. This list requires the municipality to kind of consider uh, the proposal's intent, or, or is it consistent with the intent of the planning strategy? Are there financial impacts on the municipality? Uh, these criteria also require us to consider um, services like central sewer or septic system. We look at land use conflict. We look at uh, well field areas, and there aren't any designated well field areas in this location, but often uh, closer to uh, communities, uh, you know, more more developed communities, there are well fields that provide drinking water, and so this is a consideration in a lot of uh, the municipality. And we also look at site suitability. You know, is it uh, is there a giant river running through it? Is it super steep? You know, and in this case, it's it seems like pretty pretty well suited. Uh, the applicant and I walked the property uh, last week, and uh, you know, it's it's quite wooded and and seems to be drained relatively well, um, and uh, certainly accom could accommodate uh, tourist accommodations. 
So this is just a little, little kind of chart in terms of the process that we go through. I've mentioned a staff report and that it goes to this planning committee, the planning advisory committee. So after this public information meeting, we kind of hope to hear from people in the community. We do a review some of these criteria and other considerations, uh, including what we hear from the public. And if applicable, we go to an area advisory committee and then a planning advisory committee. Sunken Lake area does not have an area advisory committee, so we would just go straight to the planning committee. And that planning committee would consider the staff report. They'd consider what they hear from the public, uh, and then they would make a recommendation to municipal council. And council would give it first reading. They would hold a public hearing, so there's another opportunity for the public to become uh, involved in this process and speak directly to council before they give their second or final reading. And then there's always a 14 day appeal period for any council decision like this. We also notify people in the newspaper and we do send letters to uh, properties within 500 feet for both this meeting and the public hearing. So what we hope to do is we hope to kind of hear from you uh, from the public and if you have any questions or comments regarding the kind of proposal, you can certainly reach the municipality by phone or email. My contact is here. You can reach me by telephone at 902-690-6276 or by email at mfredericks at countyofkings.ca and uh, that contact information is also available on our website, uh, but certainly hope to hear from folks. And with that, I'll pass it back to Councillor Allen. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Chesley, do you have anything that you would like to add or present at this time? Sure, I uh, certainly appreciate you guys both going through that. I feel like most of everything was covered by showing the site plan and going everything in high detail. Uh, what I think I would love to add is our the history of that site is Long's campground uh, that has been vacant and in, in not in use for 20 years. And what I'd love to reiterate to the public and the local community of which I'm a member to is that reinstating this, although in the proposal, the way that it's proposed views it as tense, it's more of a glamping retreat experience. And what we're not trying to achieve as the Long's, as somebody who lives here as part of the community who certainly loves the quiet nature of Sunken Lake is add back a campground that would add noise and boat use that was its historic use. What we're looking to do is a quiet retreat without boat access to the um, to the general public, but have a nice quiet retreat that is removed from the main road, from the uh, local, or sorry, the edging properties. And as myself, my family who live out here and uh, as a member of the community, what we want to establish is a use for this. There's a consensus uh, that's increasing in the valley that there's need and a requirement for this. And with the trail system, water access, I think uh, a four season glamping would be the new term, I believe, that would be used for what these experiences are. They're not necessarily tense. So um, although the proposal also notes that it's 25 units, that's what's a requirement of the proposal to make this a ease uh, proposal. However, it will be a it'll be a phased uh, proposal in the way it's developed in that there will likely only be five to seven units, not even likely there will only be five to seven units in its first iteration of how we build that is to see the impacts of impact and most importantly on the community uh, on the environment and then of course demand. And so if there's not demand for an increase in units, we wouldn't get all the way to 25. But uh, other importance is that we all live out here, myself, my mother, um, and lots of my friends and everybody. Generally, I think I feel like I know 90% of the community here. And so I'll be looking for their feedback as to how this goes, that we won't be dropping in 25 units um, once this is uh, approved, if that is the case, um, that that will be how we flow through this process. That's great. That's helpful. I think it's often good to hear about phasing because we often get applications for you know the the end proposal or something large, but in reality, it's often phased. And so it's good. It's good to hear that from the applicant um, to understand it. At least at the at the beginning, there'd be you know five, six, or seven kind of units to begin with. I think that's helpful. Thanks, Jessalyn. Yeah, and and further to that, we know that we have out here the one of the most pristine water sources in our county and yeah. to preserve that by ensuring that we're far enough away from the water that the appropriate septic systems are put in that the way that the water is run uh, through this proposal is that we're primarily protecting the uh, the environment but looking out for the future of what could potentially happen of the impacts of this proposal 
Thank you, Mark and uh, Chesley, for your presentations. And anyone that wants to contact the uh, Mark Fredericks from the planning department, Mark has already posted his contact information on the screen. So with that said, that concludes the uh, meeting today. And uh, thank you. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you guys very much. Very good. Thanks, guys.